Hey everyone, come on, my name is Henry and I'm so first stoked that we get to do this together. It's never the same without you. Come on, it is Sunday service. It's gonna be the best day of the week. Why? Because you are watching and you are listening. I wanna first say thank you so much to every person that has subscribed to our City Church International YouTube channel. Thank you so much as you continue to subscribe and share the content to help others. And hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you do it now? And uh, hey, and don't don't forget, you can also listen to us on on podcasts on Anchor, Spotify. Come on, you can while you're working out, you're walking in the beach, walking your dog at the coffee table. Come on, let's learn, let's grow. I'm a big believer about having an increased mindset, a growth mindset, and that's what we want to do for you. We want to be that cheerleader in your corner. Come on, you know, and just cheer you on because God has called you to live the blessed life. And what, what does that mean? It means to be empowered to win, empowered. And you've, you've been built for the battle, but there is more in you. And so come on, we're just super stoked today because <clears throat> we're, having a, we're gonna have an amazing time. And uh, I want you to get your journal. I want you to get your paper, your pen, as we grow today, you know? And do me a favor, right now while you're watching, share this content, share this video, because I believe it's gonna help others, you know? Many people have been asking me, why do you keep telling us all that it's the greatest times to be alive? And it's a great question because um, people in the midst of all the legitimate evil that everyone has walked by, walked in in the last 13 months, 14 months, <clears throat> people will ask and say, you keep saying it's the greatest time to be alive, it's the greatest time to be alive. And the reason it's the greatest time to be alive is simply because it's the greatest time to serve. It is the greatest time to love more. Come on, I'm a big believer that love wins. And you know, how can this world be better until we serve? I truly believe that people really wanna see Jesus, but they cannot see Jesus until they see him in us. I'm not talking about preaching. I'm not talking about, hey, getting, you know, start preaching to people and telling people this, no. For me, that's a turnoff for me. For me, it's loving people, you know, just compassion in action, just loving people. And when they do ask me, you know, what's, what makes you tick? What, what gets you going? Like, you know, this vibe is positive. This, this vibe is just so electrifying. This vibe is just like, it attracts people. Then I tell them my story. My story is simple. It's Jesus. And can I tell you today, today, we're gonna learn about you are shaped to serve. You know, so there was a message to this. It's called Shape to Serve. Come on, put that on the chat line. As a matter of fact, why don't you represent where you're watching from right now? Let us know where you're watching. Come on, connect, put some emojis. Come on, if, if there's a tagline there that hits you, put it on the chat line. We wanna connect with you. We wanna know who you are. And uh, it's gonna be amazing. So come on. Before we start, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for every person watching or listening right now. I thank you that you've called us all with a life mission, and that is to serve. That you didn't save us to sit, you saved us to serve. And Father, I thank you that today, many people, Father, will have conviction by the power of the Holy Spirit to say, hey, here I am, use me, Lord. Here I am, send me. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for this opportunity you've given us to make a difference in the world we live in today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, if you love Jesus, come on. If you're excited for today, put it on the chat line. Let's go. I want to hear from you. Put it on there. Let's go. So, safe to serve. Um, I put safe to serve. I put shape to serve. But I really love shape to serve. And the reason is because... In the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about be you, <clears throat> discovering your who, you know, and I really feel that there's a lot of uncertainty going on. There's a lot of hurt. There's a lot of unrest. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of racial tension. There's, there's a lot of everything, you know, but I, at the same time, I also see opportunity and it is the opportunity that God has positioned us as a church, as a people to be in position to shine the brightest, to love more. I like saying loving more like this. Let's love without limits. 
Let's love like you've never been hurt before. And you can't really do all that until you discover your who, until you start learning to be you. And what do I mean by you? Because this world is full of hurt and just so much that's going on, offense and hate and so much going on. But <clears throat> when you learn to be you and you walk every day in you, you know, it attracts people by being positive because you're positive, you're hopeful, you, you know, you're shining, you're radiant. And you do things to serve others, you know, just because you're genuine, you're authentic. You know, the authenticity of why you serve. It's not because you want something or you want to gain or you need something or you need to connect or no, it's not about that. It's just simply, how can I add value to you? How can I compliment you? It just, it might be that one smile. Might be that one kind word that just says, hey, you look amazing. Or, hey, you look, you're a stud, bro. Come on, you're a champ, you know? And <clears throat> I want to get in there because <clears throat> I believe that we've all been given spiritual gifts. And as you learn to be you, I truly believe you're going to discover that you've been shaped to serve in a lot of areas in your life. So <clears throat> God shaped you for work. In other words, God shaped you and I to serve. We weren't saved to sit. <clears throat> we were saved to serve, you know. And I believe today in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 through 6, look what it says here. Look what Paul says. There are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. In a nutshell, what that simply means, <clears throat> I'm not here to compete against you. I'm here to complete you. And you're there to complete me. The kingdom of God, in a nutshell, is... We are called to complete, not to compete. Did you hear that? You better write that down right now. You know, I don't need to be good at everything. I'm just here to add value and to, come on, to add value, to complement what you're doing, to celebrate you, you know, and to lift you higher. I, I've always known this, that if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go together. And so... Come on, this journey is about together. I know that City Church International, our community in itself, we can't do everything, but we can do something. Come on. And when we begin to join forces under, you know, just with collaboration, because I truly believe that collaboration creates multiplication. You know, this is why in, whether we're in LA, in Hollywood, San Diego, Seattle, Tampa, Chicago, just everywhere we're at, you know, Jesus is diversity, you know, that we, we just, we collaborate, we come together, but it's always with our life mission in mind. What can we do to help others? How can we serve others? How can we make this community better? And it's all through being together. And it is through when we discover our shape, we discover that we are shaped to serve. And this is what Paul was talking about. I want to use this illustration because in architecture, form follows function. In other words, if when you tell me what you want to use the building for, then I'll tell you how to build it. Did you hear that? When you tell me what you want to use the building for, then I'll tell you how you are to build it. But in human beings, it's the exact opposite. Why? Because function follows form. Did you hear that? Function follows form. Figure out, in other words, what, what do I mean by that? Figure out what God, how God has shaped you and how he wired you. Learn, learn what has, he's placed in you the untapped potential in you, the embedded potential in you, the art in you, the creativeness in you, your unique you. You know, when you learn what he's given you, in other words, I like to call it shape. 
you know, the shape in you. And you learned in the last two episodes of be you, you know, that the shape means this, the letter S spiritual gifts, the letter H heart, come on, the letter A abilities and the letter P personality and the letter E experience. Come on, when you tap into your shape, come on, of being you, the best version of you, the original you, you know, I've learned and I've made a decision, you know what, I'm going to live my best version of who I am because God wants to use the best version of who you are, the original you, who God created you to be, you know, and even as you and I, you're watching and you're listening, there's a cry, there's a hurt right now of people that are waiting for you to activate and deploy the real version of who you are so you can go out there into the mission field and serve others. So today, I believe that you'll know what you're supposed to do with your life. I'm believing that the Holy Spirit will speak to your life. And he will reveal to you what you're supposed to do in your life. God doesn't put people on earth without giving them a life mission or a life work. Come on. God's created life work for you here on earth. A life, a, a, a life assignment, a life mission here on the earth. And your life's work, yeah, it may be your job. It may be your career, that business. Um, or how, how do you serve your community? Because... If your work, your career, your business is not shaped to serve others or shaped to, you know, your com community, maybe perhaps we need to reevaluate why we're doing what we're doing. You know, because maybe some of us are wanting to build empires on me, myself, and I, and um, look at me and watch me and see me, you know, and, uh, and maybe we're building it on sand. And here God is wanting us to say no. I, I want to put the light on you so you can point them to me, so you can go serve. I'm a big believer in serving in the shadows. You know, I, I, I don't need to be on this, but I'm very grateful for this because I get to tell the story now, the story of Jesus, of what he's done in my life and how to empower others and implore others, inspire others, bring aspiration for others to say, hey, let's go serve. You, you are shaped to serve. So work is part of God's purpose for your life. Huh. Work, come on, W-O-R-K. In other words, serve, S-E-R-V-E, -E, serve. You're not on this planet just to be a placeholder. Hello. You're not on this planet just to be a consumer and a taker. Hello, come on. You're not on this planet just to use up resources and me, myself, and I. You know what that is? It's called entitlement. You know what that is? It's called me, myself, and I. You know what that is? It's self-centeredness. You want to be the center of attention. It's not, that's not what life is. That's not the work and what we're, we're here to be on the earth for. We're here. We're shaped to serve. Come on, somebody. As a matter of fact, your life and my life, we're here on the earth to make a contribution. Woo, come on. We're here to make a, a contribution to life. So we're here to go live a life, watch this, of generosity. To live a life of generosity. What does that mean? It's a life of generosity with your time, with your talents, and with your treasure. We're here for contribution. Come on, somebody. Who wants to live a life of contribution? Come on, put it on the chat line. Your contribution is based on your shape. God never gives you work, come on, work to do without giving you the means to do it. Come on, God never gives you work to do without giving you the means to do it. That's why you and I, we have spiritual gifts and other parts of our shape. But can I tell you, we get so caught up in the pains, in the defeats, in the failures, unworthiness, shame, guilt, condemnation, the lies of Satan, we, the bait of Satan. We, we get so caught up on the things we've done or what people have done. And we start feeling like that you have a sad story. Can I tell you? Join the club. 
Everybody's been hurt. Everyone's been hurt. Come on. We have all have a story. We all have a setback. We all have a place where we've been in life, where we have lost, where we blew it. Like, my God, how am I going to get out of this one? But can I tell you, this is why God's illogical love, come on, <laughs> it'll change the whole existence of who you are. So you can discover your you, your who, and be you. You know why? Because now you can be a life giver. You can be a, a person on life mission to go serve others. Because you and I, we don't deserve this. We don't deserve this, but now we get to do this. We have this amazing privilege and honor to serve humanity through our spiritual shape, our gifts. So I, I, I've learned that there's a lot of potential that is dormant in people. But it's until you decide to discover them and develop them. Once you decide and say, you know what, I'm not going to stay here in a place of failure, in a place of defeat, in a place of, of just, you know, I, poor old me and this happened to me, my father, my mother, my ex-husband, my what all these things. No, you know what, can I tell you, that's all part of your chapter. That's all part of your story. And I believe that through your pain, this is why I put experiences in shape. It is through your experiences in life that can help others and bring hope others and lift others up. And But it's until you discover the embedded potential in your life that you're going to say, you know what? Either I'm going to just stay here and lie dormant until I die. Can I tell you? <laughs> you already died because you see no future. You see no hope. But today... It's a new day because today you're going to discover that you've been de designed. You've been, there's an architecture about you that you've been shaped to serve. And, you know, it's, this is tragic that many surveys have shown most Americans in the U.S. are in the wrong job. They're in jobs that they're not shaped to do. In other words, what I'm saying is, they're just in jobs primarily for economic reasons or for status, not because the job is fulfilling. You know, they're good at it or they're shaped for it. You know, can I tell you, if you're in a job that's not using the shape, you know, the shape that God has given you, you know, you need to ask God, open the door to another job, to another career. So you can tap into that shape that God has called you to lead right where you're at in your community. You know, I just like saying it this way. Life's too short to work, you know, and work at a place that fits, you know, that, that it's not what you wanted. It's not even your passion. Life is too short not to work that fits with who you are or what you were made to be, your shape. You know what? I believe your shape is needed in the workplace. Your shape is needed in the career. Your shape is needed in the business you're launching or in the business you have. Your shape is needed in your community. And let me tell you, but while you are waiting, or maybe right now you're unemployed, you know, like this, it's been devastating, you know, this last year and a half that many people have lost their jobs. And, but while you're waiting and you're asking God, Look for ways to serve community. Come on, to serve others in a way that expresses your shape, who you are. And that's what Paul was teaching us in 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 6, that knowing your shape helps you answer some of life's biggest questions. Knowing your shape. What are some of life's biggest questions? Here's a question for us all today. What's God's will for our life, for your life. Hmm. What's God's will for my life? It's a big question, but I believe that God will reveal to you your shape. Here's another question. What does God want me to do with my life? Have you ever asked yourself those questions? What does God want me to do with my life? We've all been at that crossroad. Is there something else to my life? Should I be doing something else? You know? What kind of job or career should I have? What kind of business should I launch? What should be my ministry? 
You know, what should be my mission in the world? And your shape, my shape, explains where you should be headed. But it's until you tap into your shape. As a matter of fact, your shape helps shape your work. Your shape. It begins to shape your work. Can I tell you today, let me remind you, we can't do everything, but we can do something. And you have to be all in. You have to be all in in what God has called you to do. And so I believe today that while you're waiting, ask God, God, what is my life mission? What do you want me to do today? What can I do to serve community? What can I do to serve in the house of God in church? What can I do at my job, in my career, to help others and complement others? Can I tell you something? That managers are more interested in a position. Transformational leaders are more interested in the next generation. Huh. I'm a leader of leaders. I'm a transformational leader. I'm not thinking about a position because, you know, it's crazy because even in church, people get weird in church. <laughs> they get position possessed. You know, can I tell you, I'm thinking of the next generation because the next generation is not the next, like in, in a generation to come. No, the next is now. I believe we're in a new era. I believe the future is now. And I'm just saying, hey, get on my shoulders. Get them as dirty as possible. I want to lift you higher. I want you to learn through my pains, my experiences. I want you to learn through my pitfalls, through, through my painful experiences that I've done, the, you know, my, my moments, my aha moments. I want you to learn through my potholes. Why? Because I believe that God is doing an acceleration right now because the harvest, it's plentiful. There's a lot of work to do. But where are the workers? Where are the people that are shaped to serve? We're having, trying to figure out, you know, because of our pain and all these things, we're still stuck there. But can I tell you the finished work at the cross, Jesus did it all for you so you can discover your who of how much he loves you. And I want to give that opportunity today to someone right now that maybe you've been lost. What do I mean by lost? We get, <clears throat> we get lost in Instagram. I'm not like that. I don't have this. I wish I had that, I, you know, all this comparison game, this thirst trap, we get stuck and we, you know, only if I would know, can I tell you, you, you keep saying only if I had this, only if I had that. What about using with what God has given you, the little? I'm always reminded that you may think that what you have in your hand is little, but when you give your little to God, come on, he makes much out of it. And what you think is much in your hand, is little in God's hand. And so today, whoever you are, whoever's watching and listening, maybe you have little right now. But can I tell you, you're little? God is waiting to turn that into much to serve others. I want to give you this opportunity. And all it takes is one step. And it is, Jesus, I give you my life. That's simple. Jesus, I give you my life. If you just prayed that simple prayer, right now put it on the chat line and put i have decided put it on there and you know right now heaven is rejoicing over you you know we're celebrating you and i want to help continue to celebrate you by you telling us who you are so dm us right now messages right now come on put it on the chat on the chat line and put i have decided as we want to continue to bring you content and resources to help you to be, come on, to live the best version of you, to live your best life now, you know? And I'm a big believer that, you know what? You're not safe to sit, you're safe to serve, you know? Yes, we sit because we want to continually to be students, to grow and learn and evolve and grow and, and thrive. And, but there's a world awaiting us that, you know what, is crying out for help, for hope for a smile, for kindness, for generosity. And that's you and I. Come on. <laughs> I thank God for you today. And I also want to thank God to every person that is watching and listening that continues to be a contributor to the Billion Soul Harvest. Stop being a taker. You, do you know that when we 
when we do tithes and offerings, I know that this gets kind of, uh, because it's about giving now. Don't turn it off now. You need to hear this right now because you just heard this message. Let's be a contribution on the earth through your faithful tithes and offerings. And by the way, our tithe is not giving. It's honor. It's bringing honor to God. It's bringing honor so that there can be meat in the house. You know what meat is? It's this right here. It's so that we can go take this meat, come on, and share it to the world to be a contributor. And you, come, come on, get to be part of this to bring meat that other people are being reached because of this. That is what tithes and offerings and so much more that we do around the world. But it is through your generosity, your tithes, your faithful tithes and offerings, we wanna say thank you so much on behalf of my family and I and the City Church International team because we can't do it without you. Your generosity generates change and makes a difference. And we stand on God's promise of Psalm 65, 11 that we declare God's goodness. Come on, that He will crown your year with His goodness and His path will drip with His abundance. Come on, we declare and decree an increased mindset, a, a growth mindset that believes this. We think, we believe, we expect. Come on, increase, increase, increase in Jesus' name. Come on, man, it's been so amazing today. And don't forget, share this content with all your social media platforms. Be a social media evangelist. Come on, and as we go today, I wanna remind you of this. We declare and decree that the best is still yet to come. All things new. May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord make his face shine upon you, may the Lord be gracious unto you, lift his countenance over your life and give you his peace. Come on. Let's go. Let's be deployed into the world. Love God, love people, serve others, and change the world. Shape to serve. Let's go.